so much, everyone. I'm, I'm so delighted to be here. I've just had a very quick look at, at the beautiful books that have been produced by this project and thinking, it's nothing but graphs and maps, it's heaven. You can just, <laughs> nerd heaven, it's wonderful. So thank you so much for inviting me to this launch event and thank you, Peter, for that kind introduction. The Plant Atlas 2020 represents the remarkable achievement of thousands of dedicated volunteers over two decades. The data gathered provides an invaluable resource not just for policymakers like myself, but all bodies with a hand in nature conservation. Let me take this moment to thank you and all the volunteers who aren't here tonight sincerely for your contribution. Data gathering and analysis can be expensive. In Scotland, we rely heavily on <coughs> citizen scientists for much of our data. Citizen science gives us access to larger data sets than could be funded otherwise. It also emphasizes that nature is owned by citizens. It isn't the sole purview of academics and politicians. We will continue to rely on citizen science for our species data. My old dad, who is in his 80s now, would probably never use the term citizen scientist to describe himself. But throughout my entire life, he has led and coordinated and participated in breeding bird surveys in Alberta, Canada, where he lives. And that data, much like the data you've collected, becomes part of the story that we tell about our natural environment and about how humans have impacted on it. And for myself, I think that that, obviously other than raising his children and then supporting his family, I think that's probably my father's greatest legacy him and his fellow volunteers who did that work season after season in all weathers, as I'm, sure, as I'm sure many of you have experienced, because they knew how important it was to understand what was happening in our natural environment year on year as those things changed. And I don't need to tell any of you the kind of catastrophic decline in nature that we have seen over the last 60 years, and particularly concerning to me over the last 30 years, while we've been trying to protect it. I think the Nature Scott report said 24% loss over the last 30 years while we've been trying to protect it. It's absolutely clear to me that what we have been doing isn't enough. Not, not remotely enough. 24% loss isn't a tiny, it's not tiny, but that's devastating. Uh, that's heartbreaking. And I know we all grew up with the stories of nothing but loss. Every newspaper article every year, another ecosystem damage, another species at risk of extinction or actually extinct, something else lost to humanity and to our planet that cannot be recovered, that cannot be put back. And this is where we stop that. This kind of work helps us create those evidence policies that allow us to stop that. And it is the Scottish Government's policy to stop that decline of nature by 2030 and substantially restore nature in Scotland by 2045. We're, we're going to change that story from one of loss, of one of decline, of damage, to one of abundance, of growth, the, the good kind of growth, of growth, of, of people living alongside nature instead of just extracting from it. So this work that you have done, this foundation that creates will allow us and continue to allow us to do it and allow you, the citizens of Scotland, to hold us in government to account. Are our policies working? Are they achieving what they are intended to achieve? Have we got the right policies in the right place? And I look forward to all of you holding us to account while we do that. Just make sure I haven't uh, done anything else. But the work that we're recognizing tonight will underpin the future of red lists of threatened species and help us understand how effective environmental and conservation policy can meet these threats in the future. All of us working together really will make the difference here, changing that story from one of loss to nature restoration. So I look forward to hearing from the volunteers tonight and other BSBI members, hearing about their experiences and contributions to this important project, and I look forward to the contribution this work will make to our ongoing policy development, and I thank you all very much.